Here's Tommy Cook, one of the stars at this year's Reps 2015 Showcase. At that time, I was under contract to all three networks at the same time. Junior on The Life of Riley, Little Alexander on The Blondie Show, and Little Beaver, The Adventures of Red Rider Radio Show. From out of the West comes Red Rider, America's famous fighting cowboy. Oh, that pony, Little Beaver. They've held up the Millersville freight, and we've got to get on their trail. You betcha, Red Rider. Get along, get him up quick. Tommy, what's your experience been at Showcase? It's been a very pleasant experience, and I always look forward to it. There are so many very, very talented actors in Seattle that work with us on these shows. Everybody from Larry Albert to Jen Oliver, they're terrific actors and singers, and it's always nice to work with them. In the radio years, you did regular parts. You were on a show as a regular, as they called it. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hi, Mr. Boynton. Oh, hello, Harriet. Mr. Boynton, Daddy wants to see you in his office right away. Something about signing a requisition for some test tubes you wanted. Oh, thank you, Harriet. And, Miss Brooks, your landlady called, and she wants you to call back when you can. Now, let's see. Is there someone I've forgotten? Better look under the table to make sure. <laughs> did Mrs. Davis say what she wanted me to call her about? No, but she said she'd keep a receiver off the hook so a line would be open when you call. <laughs> There's something wrong with that, but offhand, I don't know just what. You worked with the same people a lot, and so it became this wonderful family kind of feeling. Radio, you just rely so much on the other actors. There's a, a, a real team kind of feeling. And, you know, you blow a line, somebody... Heaven help you, they hope we hope they get you out of it, you know. Well, I'd better get up to Mr. Conklin's office and get that requisition signed. Well, see you later, Miss Brooks. I'll walk to the phone with you, Miss Brooks. All right, Harriet. Well, how has Santa been treating you so far, dear? Oh, not too badly. Walter gave me a slave bracelet, but I don't think I'll wear it. Why not? You should see what he had engraved on it. Finder, please return this girl to Walter Denton. <laughs> Why, I think that's cute, Harriet. If a certain party gave me one of those bracelets, I think I might enjoy getting lost. <laughs> Gloria McMillan, tell us what's so special about reps. These radio shows are absolutely the most fun thing Ron and I do. We do live radio theater. I thought, I can't believe that. That's too good to be true. And uh, I just feel like it's a great privilege. Every time they ask me to do anything, I just can't wait to do it. Now, to Ivan Curry and his career. I started in radio, really, I get by taking a general audition at CBS. Here they come, the riding fast, the riding hard. It's time for excitement and adventure in the West with Bobby Benson and the b bar b Riders. b Now, how did you actually get hired to do Bobby Benson? Was it just an audition? Yeah. Suddenly, however, the noose of a lasso snakes through the air and settles over Wendy. A moment more, and he's toppled from the rail and sent staggering backward across the ground. Hey, what the... Hold oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Little boss, why'd you want to go and lasso me? Sorry, B. Wendy, you look like a newborn calf standing at the end of that race. Oh, I really am sorry, Wendy. I was just practicing with my rope. Harker showed me a new way to toss it. Ah, oh, Bobby Boy learned fast. He sure took care of a long-eared goat named Wendy Wales. Now, you keep out of this, Did you do many public appearances? For Bobby oh, Benson? Oh, boy, of course, yeah. yeah. Many, men. And yeah. I, I really love doing it. I mean, part of the fun of going to so many of these the conventions and stuff is to, to get to do this again. Sure. It's, it's just fun. Beverly Washburn. So did you decide, okay, I want to be a film actress? You know, it was fun for me. I was sent on an audition at Paramount for a movie called Here Comes the Groom with Bing Crosby and Jane Wyman, Franchot Tone, Alexis Smith, Louis Armstrong and Dorothy Lamore. It was a big cast, mm -hmm. and I was um, cast as the uh, little French war orphan that Bing Crosby adopts. People have always asked me who is your favorite to work with, it, and I'd have to say Jack Benny. He was just the nicest, most generous, wonderful man, and I met him when I was, I guess I was seven or eight when I did that, and after that he had me do a couple of his radio shows. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. How you done? Say, Mary, I called you last night, but your mate said you were out. That's right. I went to the baseball game with Van Johnson. That was nice. Who won? When you with Van Johnson, who watches the game? <laughs> Mary, what's this you dropped on the floor? That? Oh, that's the letter I got from Mama. From your mother, eh? 
What does the third dimensional playing field have to say? <laughs> I'll read it to you. <laughs> My darling daughter, Mary, just a few lines to let you know that we are all well. The weather's nice here now, but as you probably read in the paper, last month we had an awful blizzard. And when your father came in from the barn, his milking hand was frozen. Gee. I hope it thaws out soon, as we'd like to get the cow out of the house. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Janice. Hey, kid. I'm glad you got here, because it's time for your... Wait a minute. Janice, look at me. Huh? Janice, this is the first time I ever saw you wearing glasses. Are your eyes bad? No. Then why are you wearing those glasses? My uncle died and left them to me. <laughs> Your uncle? Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I can't see a darn thing with him. <laughs> well, for heaven's sakes, kid, if you can't see with them, take them off. Just because somebody leaves you something in a will, you're not compelled to use it. I'm not? No. Anybody want to buy a set of teeth? <laughs> now, cut that out. And take off those glasses. I always got a kick out of the fact that he played the stingy tightwad because he was truly probably the most generous man I, I've ever known. And one of our special guests this year will be Stuffy Singer. So they, it, was a, it, was a unique, it was a unique group of people. Uh, you know, the majority of them um, weren't you know, weren't staggeringly paid like they are today, and they were entertainers. They were just having some fun and doing their job and go about their business. Well, hello, little children. Hello. Hello. It, where is uh, Miss Milford? She'll be back. She went to get our orange juice. Oh, well, I'll just put these packages down here and wait. Are you Santa Claus? Me? No, nah, he's not Santa Claus. He hasn't got a white beard. But he's nice and fat. <laughs> yeah, but he's not Santa Claus. Santa Claus never comes around here. Uh, now, wait a minute, young fellow. I'm uh, sort of a Santa Claus. I brought all these presents to you children. For us? Honest and truly? Oh, boy. You see, Stuffy, he is Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, boy, I gotta come over and see them. Stuffy's lucky. He's in a wheelchair. Oh, well, I'll bring the presents around to your little beds when Miss Milford comes. I want to open mine. Now, now, wait a minute, Stuffy. You shouldn't open presents until Christmas. I don't want to open mine until Christmas. I just want to dream about what's in them. Uh, that's the idea, little girl. Huh? While we're waiting for Miss Milford, will you read us a Christmas story? A uh, Christmas story? That's what she was doing. Yeah, they're in that book. Oh, well, I like stories. I used to read them to my niece and nephew. Let's see what we've got here. Why the Chimes Rang, by Raymond McDonald Alden. I like that one. I don't know it. Well, I've been in the hospital longer than you have. Uh, yes. Well, let's read it, huh? The, the first show I did was, what was it, the rep show up there. Now, I hadn't done radio since I was 12 or 13 years old. True. 14 years old. And I'm a, I'm a little guy at that time, and little guys normally had their own microphone. And in addition to that, I was small, so they had a box. I remember walking up to the microphone, and there's a bunch of people standing around my microphone. And I'm going, what are all these people doing here? Where do I put my script? And where's my box? <laughs> Here's Joan Benny, daughter of Jack Benny, one of the guests at this year's Rep Showcase. Joan, you wrote a book, Sunday Nights at 7. How did that come about? After my father died, a lot of people were asking me about writing a book about my father, but I remembered that he had written an autobiography. I found the manuscript. In the meantime, George Burns had written a couple of books about his life and Gracie and so on, and I got a call from his publisher, would you consider writing a book? But I came up with the idea, well, what if I wrote my version of Life with Father and intermingled it with his memories? Gee, what a terrific idea, Joan. <laughs> and that's how it happened. Mr. Benny? Yes? 
My name is Joan. The girls in my high school class are having a scavenger hunt. Uh Uh-huh. And I was selected to come over here and get something personal from you. Something personal? Very personal. Oh. Oh, I bet I know what you have to get. A lock of my hair. I'm supposed to get the whole thing. I have an autograph book, and all my parents' friends signed my autograph book. My mother's closest friends were Barbara Stanwyck and Claudette Colbert. And, of course, I have their autographs. I knew they were movie stars, but they were just our friends. Eddie Cantor, Jimmy Stewart, uh, Ray Milland, uh, the Gary Coopers, Gary and Rocky Cooper, um, and on and on. Danny and Sylvia Kay, George and Gracie, of course, Van Johnson. I love Van Johnson. Anyway, they all signed my autograph book. Hello. Hello. My name is Joan. I'm a junior at Chadwick High School. My name is Dennis. I'm a private in the Foreign Legion. (laughs) I leave to join my regiment tonight. Gee, you mean you're going all the way out to the desert? Uh Uh-huh. Way over to North Africa? I thought it was in Palm Springs. (laughs) Say, wait a minute. I know who you are. You're Dennis Day, aren't you? Uh Uh-huh. Gosh, wait till I tell the rest of the girls in my class I met Dennis Day. They think you're a wonderful singer. They do? Yeah, they think you're almost as good as Vic Damone. <laughs> was the feud between your father and Fred Allen real? Oh, no, no. They were very close friends, and that was all a setup. It happened inadvertently from what I've been told, that Fred insulted my father on his radio show, said something about how badly he played the violin. And my father's writers wrote something very nasty about Fred, and that's how the feud started. We're in on it together. Well, here you are, young lady. Gee, thanks, Mr. Benny. And when the scavenger hunt is over, I'll return it. Oh, you needn't bother. Just turn it loose. It'll come home. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, goodbye, Joan. Goodbye. It has been said that your father's first choice was to be a musician. What he wanted to be was a serious violinist. He played Carnegie Hall more than once. He toured the country to raise money for the musician's pension fund, and he he did a kind of comedy concert, and he raised a ton of money for the musicians, and he loved that. He would have given up comedy in a minute if he could have just played concerts. Joan, you have a story about music of your own. Shirley Duckworth. She was a friend of mine in high school, and I used to go visit them, and her stepfather was Benny Goodman. Visiting Shirley was my idea of heaven. I would sit and listen to Benny practice hour after hour. You said that some of the details in the television show and the radio show were true. Can you tell us about that? Some of the things they used on the show were actually true, and some of the things were totally made up. The Coleman's being our neighbors, not true. The Jimmy Stewart's being our neighbors, true. My mother having a sister babe, true. Um, We had a polar bear in the basement, false. I'm looking forward to it. As I say, I'm always happy to come to Seattle. We are talking to Terry Moore, one of the celebrities at this year's showcase. Terry, tell us a bit about your career. One year I had 30 national magazine covers like Look, Life, and on and on and on. I was a cover girl, too. What role are you most associated with? Mighty Joe Young. I never thought it would be a hit. Everybody remembers me from that movie. You have a story about Clark Gable. It was during World War II. I was probably early teens. My mother and I were walking outside of MGM, and she said, there's Clark Gable, and I looked up, and he was in his uniform. I never saw anything so gorgeous in my life, and I screamed and faded, and he caught me. Welcome to the show, Terry. I'm glad you were able to make the trip up here with us. Tell me, do you like this part of California? Well, what I could see as we flew in was very impressive. Rugged cliffs, rolling hills, miles and miles of sand dunes. Yeah, it all adds up to a wonderful place to live if you're forced into it. (laughs) Terry, did you like to do comedy as well as drama? I did them all. I used to do... Um, Red Skelton, Dean Martin, and, and Jerry Lewis, Ben Crosby, Bob Hope. I worked with Bob a lot. I traveled with him. I remained such good friends right to the end. I worked with all of them. And, Terry, you're a comparative newcomer to the Hollywood scene, and I'm sure we'd all be interested in learning more about you. Would you like to tell us about yourself? All right, Bob. Where shall I start? With your phone number. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Terry. That was just a slip. Oh, it's all right. I'm sure you didn't mean anything by it. I'm glad you're sure. Just tell us... Uh... <laughs> Just tell us anything you want, Terry. For example, what are your hobbies? Well, I ride horseback, I cook, I love to knit, and I'm a licensed pilot. I fly my own plane. What a coincidence. That's my hobby, too. Really, Bob? Yeah, what size needles do you knit with? 
Terry, I understand you have an interesting story on how you got the name Terry Moore. Right. Well, actually, Harry Cohen changed it because I got my first grown-up role opposite Glenn Ford, and Harry Cohen said, we cannot have two Fords in one movie. I turned to my mother, and he said, what is your maiden name? And she said, Big Moore. He said, that's too long. We'll make it more. And he said, what do you want for your first name? And the part was a real Tom girl. Her name was Terry. And believe it or not, I'm the first girl that anyone knows of who was na- ever named Terry. What kind of a plane do you fly, honey? A Cessna two-seater. I've got over a hundred hours in the air. No kid, Never any trouble? Oh, not once, Bob. As a matter of fact, I feel that I'm safer when I'm up in the air than I am when I'm on the ground. Don't look at me. <laughs> well, I've told you about my hobby. <laughs> Then, of course, there's my work. You see, my big break was getting that wonderful part in Come Back, Little Sheba. It's a gripping picture with great moments of drama. It's the story of a disillusioned doctor whose love for this young girl plunges him into despair. And then, in an alcoholic frenzy, he tries to murder his wife with a butcher knife. Sounds like a sequel to Hans Christian Andersen. (laughs) Terry, you did movies starting as a child actor. Did you also do radio? I always did a lot of radio and loved that. I loved doing radio, and I did the radio while my braces were on. I played um, Barbara Windsocket on Date with Judy, and I had four steady radio shows a week. How did making radio compare to the movies? I liked radio because you didn't have to dress up and have hot lights or go on hard locations. Terry, being in a picture that's up for an Academy Award must be quite a thrill. Oh, it is, Bob, and, well, even a bigger thrill is being here tonight. Really? Oh, of course. Why... Now, how many young people starting in show business get a chance to appear with one of the truly great performers? Well, if you insist. Well, not only a great artist, but, well, one of the most popular men in the whole world. Oh, don't lay it on so thick, but louder. Honestly, Bob. Honestly, Bob, this is one of the great thrills of my life to think, to think I'm actually going to meet Bing Crosby. Any thoughts on this year's showcase? It's wonderful. Just wonderful to be doing radio again. I can't wait. I love it.